Yeah, you put me down. That's my shit. I'm pissed because I didn't even know what this video was going to be about. Why? It's because I'm supposed to be covering Alexander Leopay. No, excuse me, Malik Scott versus Alex Leopay. That fight is happening in Australia. Right now, October the 31st, 2014. It is 5.52 Eastern Standard Time AM over there in Australia. It's something like 8 p.m. I'm pissed because I'm T-Street Controversy, and this is T-Street Controversy Live, and no matter what, I cover every single major fight live. So I said, fuck it, since the fight's not televised, maybe it'll show up on YouTube or Daily Motion or somewhere later on, I'll cover it then. But as of right now, this time slot has got to be filled, and we're going to talk about Mr. Vicious Victor Ortiz. Don't you know I can't stand me no Victor Ortiz. Now we're going to talk about this. Don't you know he took his first defeat, like five fights into his career, his professional career, because of an illegal punch? He hit somebody with an illegal punch. They went down, stayed down. That, and, and, and that should have been something right there. Then you got the Marcus McDonough thing. Then you got the draw with Lamont Peterson. Then you got the Floyd Mayweather head butting, trying to kiss him when I don't know what was going on with that. Then you got Jose Zito Lopez breaking his jaw. Then you got Luis Colazzo. You know how cats, you know how, like, like watch your cats sometimes. And you know how like, they put their tail up in the air and they asshole be all out and they just be prancing around like, I know you want this. You know, like, that's how, like, Victor Ortiz, when Luis Colazzo hit him, he turned around and put his ass up in the air. And this was, uh, like, I'm looking like, yo, listen, listen, listen. I can't stand me no Victor Ortiz. You know why? Because 29 wins, 5 defeats, 2 draws, 4 of those defeats have come by knockout. If you look at the person Victor Ortiz has shown us that he is, he's a head case. He is mentally and psychologically damaged. Something wrong, something happened to him when he was a kid or something. Somebody must have punched him in the face when he was, I don't know. He's traumatized from something. Because what do you think when you think about Victor Ortiz fights? The first thing that comes to your mind is, oh, let's see if he's going to get knocked out. Oh, let's see what kind of dumb shit he does to get disqualified. Let's see. It's always going to be some controversy in Victor Ortiz fights. Maybe that's why he sells. This guy that messed up a rematch with Floyd Mayweather, a fight with Saul Canelo Alvarez, Jen, God knows who. He, he, he had so many good fights lined up for him, and he kept getting chances. He kept getting chances. So why should I believe in him now? Just because he was in the Expendables 3 that flopped in the United States with Sylvester Stallone, Hall Schwarzenegger, Wesley Snipes, and Antonio Banderas? Ronda Rousey? No. No, I don't. I don't see, I don't see no... Right, let, listen, in the sport of boxing, there's going to be a winner, there's going to be a loser. And more importantly, you have to pick a side. I'm not, I would never pick Ortiz's side. Like, what, what is he showing me? To be like, you know what, I believe in him this time. The last words after his loss to Luis Colazzo, he was asked, I forgot what interview it was, they asked him about it, he was like, a knockout don't make me, bro. And you know how you always calling anybody, bro, no motherfucker, knockouts make you. People know they could, listen, a fighter, if I was a trainer, and if I was a promoter, and if I was a manager, I would match Victor Ortiz up against guys that are slow, guys that got less than 10 knockouts, and guys that, you know, I don't, like, listen, put a pressure fighter in there against Victor Ortiz, most likely they're going to knock, and they're going to knock him out. Look at since 2010, his only win has been Andre Berto. Floyd Mayweather was 41 and 0 at that time. He's 47 and 0. He was Andre Berto. The fight before that was um, a draw. Remember, Lamont Peterson, that fight was a draw. Then you go on to lose to Floyd Mayweather in the fourth round. You go on to get knocked out by Jose Zito Lopez and, and make Jose Zito Lopez the fighter that he is now today. As far as um to the fans, you get your jaw broke in the, in the ninth round and that. And then in, what was this, the second round where, where Luis Colazzo just went, listen. This may sound like a Victor Ortiz hate video, but honestly, I'm trying to figure out why. Why should I believe in him? And I don't gamble anymore, but now I'm talking to the gamblers. Why should you believe in Victor Ortiz? What has he done for you lately? So, depending on who he fights, we don't know what card he's going to be on. If you don't know, December 13, 2014, 
Amir Khan is going to be taking on Devin Alexander. You got Jamel Charlo, the brothers Charlo versus uh, Demetrius Andre. Demetrius Andre versus Jamel Charlo for the WBO 154-pound title. And then on HBO, you got um, Mauricio Herrera versus um, um, Jose uh, Benavidez. And then you got the main event, Timothy Bradley versus Diego Chavez. So one is an HBO card, one is a Showtime card. And guess what? They're both Golden Boy cards. Which one are they going to throw Victor Ortiz on to be interesting if they throw his ass back on HBO? Now that's going to be crazy. Now that's actually the news right there. But who is he going to fight? Listen, we don't know who he's going to fight. Go to his Instagram and Victor Ortiz, whatever he called himself. Or so I don't know what he's calling himself. Go to his Twitter. He's saying he'll be back on December the 13th. But who is he fighting? We just don't know. We're just going to have to wait and find out. I would want to see him fight that uh, rematch with Andre Berto. You know, in a career match, because we both know if one of those guys lose, their careers are basically over as far as, of course, they can still keep fighting. But, you know, as far as how the fans are going to feel about him, <laughs> I'm T-Street Controversy. This is T-Street Controversy Live. I cover every single major fight live. News, rumors, predictions. Now I'm getting to the fights, press conferences, interviews. The goal is... Before I get that promoter's license, I'm going to be your number one source for boxing news. I'm close. I'm not. I'm humble. I'm not going to say I'm number one yet, even though I'm the number one viewed, but I'm close. T-Street Controversy, T-Street Controversy Live.